Hi, I'm Mike Thompson, and in this video I'm going to talk about what I'll call super advanced draft calculations. If you've already watched the advanced video, this one takes it to the next level. What I'm going to show you in this video is how we're going to calculate the draft of a pointed bow or stern section. So imagine you have a piece of cardboard that is tilted back and then also tilted back this way. So you have what some might call a compound angle. In fact, there's no such thing. There's always only one minimum angle. But for our purposes, we're going to consider the way it slopes in both the x and the y direction. So what I've got here are a couple drawings of what I'm talking about. If you look at it from the end, we have a simple V hole. It is 36 in our case by 18. If you look at it from a perspective view, you can see here that it just comes to a point. It looks like a three-sided pyramid, and then it attaches to a um, prismatic, we'll call it a cockpit section. If you look at it from the side, here's the cockpit section back here that I didn't show, and it simply slopes up to a point and has a level top surface. If we look at it from a top view, you can see here that it, it looks like two triangles joined in the middle. It's, it makes an isosceles triangle. And if we imagine the water plane as it starts to sink into the water, these lines right here are going to start to ride up on the boat parallel to this long edge. Now the reason this is tricky, and it tripped me up a lot when I made my first boat, is because we have to get everything in terms of D, or our draft. So what we're going to have to do here is figure out what the volume of our boat is below the water plane. This is how we're going to calculate our stability, and what our draft will be, and where our displacement and water line are going to be. So it's very, very important to know how to do this. We'll start with a simple end view, and we're going to break it up. Let's draw a line right down the middle, and we're just going to consider the right half of our triangle here. So what we see here is, this is our D. We don't know that, we're going to solve for that, but we have to have an equation so that we can solve for it. So what we're going to do here now is come up with that equation. Well, if you look at this, it's 36 by 18. That means this top section here is 18. So the slope of this line, now this is the tricky part. I screwed this up a lot when I made my first boat as well. Normally, slope is defined as rise over run. Well, in our case, the independent variable is d. So in our case, everything is going to be run over rise. So you have to keep that in mind. It's a little bit tricky. However, here, it's 18 over 18, so it's simply just 1 times d, or just d. But we're going to go ahead and leave the number 1. Now, we've got the equation for how it slopes out this direction. The reason we need this is because we need to calculate the area of this triangle here. Since we're only doing one half of it, as you know, uh, the area of a triangle is one half base times your height. Well, we don't know our base, but now we have an equation for our base. We know our height, the height is our depth, so it's simply one half d squared. Because as our, our base is d, our height is d, so it's d squared. However, we have two of these, so we just multiply it by two since we have to account for this side as well. So we just knock off that half to multiply it by two, and we're left with d squared. That's the area of this triangle as a function of d. But that's not enough, of course. We also have to figure out how this bow section slopes up, because ultimately what we're trying to come up with here is the volume of a pyramid, which is one-third area of your base times your height. So this line here, well, it's 72 long. This, this top edge is 72. This edge is 18. Now remember, our slope is run over rise. Our run is 72. Our rise is 18. So that means this here is 4 times our depth, is 4D. OK, the hard part's pretty much done. If we look at it this way, what we're trying to calculate now is the area of one portion of this triangle here. As the water starts to come up, what's the area of this so that we can calculate the volume of our pyramid? Well, we already know this line right here. The equation for how that goes is just simply d. We know this here. This now is 4d, is the length of this side, times 4d. So, we would normally take half of that, 
because it's one half the area of the base times the height, but we're going to go ahead and account for the other side here, so we're going to leave that alone, so that's simply 4d squared. The area of our base is 4d squared here. We have to account for the height. Well, the height of our pyramid, we look at it from the side, was simply our draft, which is d. Tack on a d, this becomes 4d cubed. Now, the volume of our pyramid, though, is one-third area of the base times the height. Well, this is area of the base times the height. We have to divide that by 3. So, it becomes four-thirds d cubed is the volume of the pyramid that is beneath the water. So that is our displaced amount in the bow section. In this cockpit section here, we have this equation here, which is the area of this, but we need the volume of that prismatic shape that extends back into the cockpit section. So that there is simply 60 times d squared. So the entire equation for displacement, I'll write it up here, is 4 thirds d cubed plus the cockpit section 60 d squared. We've got everything in terms of d. This is displacement. And it's as simple as that. Now I'm going to go ahead and work a quick example and show you how we're going to use this equation to fine-tune our boat. I'm working an example now. So let's say you've got a couple buddies in your boat. You're going to weigh 350 pounds total. Well, that's not too many buddies, I suppose. With 350 pounds, we're going to use 63 as our, dis uh, as our uh, density of water. 62 pounds per cubic foot means you need to displace 5.56 cubic feet. We need this all to be in inches, so that's 9,600 cubic inches. We simply set 9,600 here, and we go through and we solve for D. And what we get is 11... Point three inches. Well, this is pretty good news. After this is all said and done, we get 11.3 inches. This is pretty good news because we built our boat to be 18 inches. What this means is the water line is right up here somewhere, slightly over halfway up, and we're going to have a good almost seven full inches of freeboard. This is excellent. You might want to adjust your height of your boat a little bit more one way or the other to either increase or decrease your freeboard as you see fit. But as you can see, it's pretty simple. And of course, if you wanted to add a point to the other end of the bow, you would simply add another one of these terms and make that an eight instead of a four. I hope this kind of helps explain things a bit, but I really appreciate you watching. Thanks a lot.